It is just not enough to wear the regalia of first female CEO of an automobile company about you must work to prove that you are worth the position you are occupying. The sheer opposite has been the case of General Motors CEO Mary Barra, who has only prided herself in the euphoria of being a first female CEO of a major automobile company without living up to the expected standards of the occupant of such office, and this has wrecked a huge havoc to GM's success in the automobile market. Well, join us in this video as we explore why Mary Barra has not been a good CEO option for GM. General Motors, GM, has a rich history in the automotive industry, known for producing iconic vehicles that have captured the hearts of millions worldwide. When it comes to selecting a CEO to lead such a prestigious company, the decision is critical. In recent years, Mary Barra has held the position of CEO at GM. However, there are compelling reasons to believe that she may not be the best choice for the company's top leadership role. One significant concern is Mary Barra's lack of experience in the automotive industry. Prior to becoming CEO of GM, she did not have a background in car manufacturing or engineering. This lack of industry-specific knowledge can be detrimental when making crucial decisions that impact the company's product development and quality control. Leading an automotive giant like GM requires a deep understanding of the complexities of the business, and Barra's limited experience in this area is a clear disadvantage. Furthermore, Mary Barra's tenure as CEO has been marred by several quality and safety issues. During her leadership, GM faced a major scandal related to faulty ignition switches that resulted in numerous accidents and deaths. This crisis exposed a significant lapse in the company's commitment to safety and quality, and it raised questions about Barra's ability to effectively manage such critical issues. A CEO should be adept at identifying and addressing problems promptly, and Barra's track record in this regard is questionable at best. Another reason to doubt Barra's suitability as GM's CEO is her handling of the company's global operations. GM is a multinational corporation with a presence in numerous countries, each with its own unique challenges and opportunities. Barra's approach to managing these diverse operations has been criticized for lacking a clear and cohesive strategy. Successful leadership in a global company requires a CEO who can navigate international markets, adapt to different cultural contexts, and drive growth in various regions. Mary Barra's leadership has not demonstrated a strong ability to do so. Moreover, GM's financial performance under Mary Barra's leadership has been less than stellar. While she has presided over periods of profitability, the company's stock performance has not been impressive, and its market share has faced challenges from competitors. A CEO's primary responsibility is to create value for shareholders, and GM's shareholders may be questioning whether Barra is the right person to lead the company towards sustained growth and profitability. One of the most significant criticisms of Mary Barra's tenure as GM's CEO is her lack of innovation and vision for the future of the automotive industry. The automotive landscape is rapidly evolving with the emergence of electric vehicles, EVs, autonomous driving technology, and sustainability concerns. Barra's approach has been criticized for being too conservative and not adequately positioning GM to compete in the future. A forward-thinking CEO is essential for a company like GM to remain relevant and competitive in a rapidly changing industry. Furthermore, GM has struggled to gain a strong foothold in the electric vehicle market, despite the growing demand for EVs worldwide. Competitors like Tesla have surged ahead, while GM's EV offerings have lagged. This is a significant missed opportunity under Barra's leadership as the transition to electric vehicles represents the future of the automotive industry. The CEO's ability to drive innovation and capture market share in this space is crucial, and Barra's performance in this regard has been underwhelming. In addition to these concerns, Mary Barra's compensation has also been a subject of controversy. Her substantial salary and bonuses have drawn criticism from shareholders and the public, especially in light of the company's performance during her tenure. A CEO's compensation should be commensurate with the value they bring to the company and its shareholders, and many believe that Barra's compensation does not align with her performance. 
Another critical aspect of leadership in the automotive industry is fostering a culture of innovation and adaptability. The modern automotive landscape demands a proactive approach to technology and sustainability. Under Barra's leadership, GM has struggled to keep up with emerging trends. The company's investments in electric vehicles, for example, while commendable, have often been overshadowed by the achievements of competitors like Tesla. A visionary CEO should be able to inspire innovation and drive the company toward a more sustainable future. Barra's leadership style has not demonstrated a strong capability to lead GM in this direction effectively. Moreover, a CEO should be a unifying force within a company, rallying employees around a shared vision. Unfortunately, during Mary Barra's tenure, there have been disputes and conflicts with the United Auto Workers EUAW Union. Labor disputes can be disruptive to operations and harm employee morale. A CEO must be skilled in labor relations and be able to foster a harmonious working environment. Barra's leadership has been marked by tension with the union, suggesting a failure to effectively manage these crucial relationships. Another concern is the perception of GM's corporate culture under Barra's leadership. The company's culture plays a vital role in shaping its reputation, attracting talent, and retaining employees. Some critics argue that GM's corporate culture has been slow to adapt to change, resulting in a lack of agility and a resistance to innovation. A CEO should be at the forefront of efforts to reshape the company culture and instill a sense of purpose and direction. Barra's approach to transforming GM's culture has not been as visible or impactful as it should be. Furthermore, the role of diversity and inclusion within a company cannot be understated in today's business landscape. While Mary Barra has been praised for being the first female CEO of a major automaker, there is more to diversity and inclusion than a CEO's gender. The broader workforce's diversity and the promotion of inclusive practices are vital for driving innovation and representing the diversity customer base of an international company like GM. Critics argue that GM's progress in this area has been slow, and the CEO should play a more proactive role in promoting diversity and inclusion throughout the organization. It's also worth noting that the automotive industry is undergoing a profound transformation with the advent of autonomous vehicles. Self-driving technology presents both opportunities and challenges, and a forward-thinking CEO should be actively shaping the company's strategy in this area. GM has made some investments in autonomous driving, but its progress lags behind leaders in this field. A CEO should be a driving force behind developing a clear vision and strategy for autonomous vehicles, which Barra's leadership has not effectively delivered. Lastly, a CEO's ability to effectively communicate with stakeholders, including investors, employees, and the public, is paramount. Mary Barra has been criticized for her communication style during critical moments, such as the ignition switch crisis. Transparent and effective communication is essential for maintaining trust and credibility during challenging times. Barra's perceived shortcomings in this regard have raised concerns about her ability to lead during times of crisis and uncertainty. So, Mary Barra's leadership as CEO of General Motors has raised several red flags that make her a questionable choice for the top position at the company. Her lack of industry-specific experience, handling of quality and safety issues, management of global operations, financial performance, lack of innovation, and compensation package all contribute to a compelling case against her suitability as GM's CEO and collectively raise doubts about her capacity to lead GM effectively in the ever-evolving automotive industry. While Barra has undoubtedly made some positive contributions to the company, there are substantial reasons to question her suitability for the role, and it may be time for GM's board to reevaluate its leadership and consider whether a change at the top is necessary to steer the company in a more promising direction. As GM navigates the challenges and opportunities of the future, it may be in the company's best interest to explore alternative leadership options to ensure its continued success and relevance in the global automotive market. What do you have to say about this? Let us know down in the comments section.